Today's video isn't directly related to 3D printing, but it is well within the realm of what we do here on the channel. Today we're going to build Tiny Pilot, a KVM over IP solution you can run on your Raspberry Pi. Hello everyone, Chris here. Yes, this video isn't directly related to 3D printing, but it does revolve around it somehow. And there's kind of a lot of backstory to this. This is one of those videos that I need to get done before we can move on to other videos. And this all started when we did the remodel of the basement. I did a lot of previous content on Octoprint and Linux, Windows, installing it in different environments. And I always used my old servers that I had just sitting around. Well, during the remodel, those all got recycled. So I didn't have a computer to do any of that testing with. So enter this mini PC that I found on Amazon. This is the Camroy AK-1. It has Windows 10 on it Pro. It's got 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD drive. It's expandable, and it has an Intel Celeron J3455 processor. Way better than any of those old Optiplexes that I used to use back in the other videos. It can do 4K video. It supports mSATA. It has Wi-Fi, gigabit Ethernet, everything we would ever need, and I bought it for less than $200 on a flash deal. It's got a handful of ports, SD card slot, HDMI, anything that we would need to do our testing. It also has kind of a cool tray down here. You can expand it. This is hooked up USB-C into the computer. You can throw another drive in there if you want to. So that mini PC is going to be the base for our testing going forward. More than enough hardware than we need for most things we do. But what testing are we going to do? Well, I would like to revisit a lot of the content we've already done. Running Octoprint on Windows, running it on Linux, multiple cameras, multiple printers, and this will be great for setting in a farm environment. Like we have a shelf full of printers, we can just put this in the back, not worry about it. So we want to get that set up and running so we can do additional content. But with these mini PCs, I don't want to have to have a keyboard, mouse, monitor hooked up to it all the time so that I can use the console because I'd like to show you the console while we're doing all of these installs. And that's where Tiny Pilot comes in. Tiny Pilot is a fantastic open source solution to KVM over IP. You can come check out their site on how it works, how it's set up, but it's a very useful device for doing something like this, being able to control your keyboard, mouse, and video from an alternate computer. Now, they do sell a Tiny Pilot all set up ready to go with everything you need, but it is close to $400. And that might seem just a little bit out of scope for something like this. But you can also build it. Remember, it's open source. All the information you need to build it is right here on GitHub. They even give you a list of the parts that you need to source. So why Tiny Pilot? Why build your own device? Well, if you've ever looked at one of these devices or had to deal with one, you know that they could be very expensive. One with the same features that Tiny Pilot has could be upwards of $1,500, depending on what you bought. So it's definitely worth your time looking at this project. Now, this can be built for somewhere around $150. That's about what we're looking at today. Now, they do have the paid for version like I showed you before. That one comes with a pro version of the software. It has a lot more security features and encryption than this one does. Having said that, you don't want to install this version anywhere that's internet facing because you don't have a lot of security. You could get into the network, get on this Pi, get into your computer, and then maybe to your 3D printer. And we don't want that. So make sure you install it on the network in the correct location. With all that said, let's go ahead and build the software first, and then we'll take a look at all the hardware that's involved to be able to control this computer remotely from another computer. So basically all we have to do to install Tiny Pilot is run this block of commands right here from their GitHub. It's fairly straightforward, doesn't take very long at all. But you will have to have a build of Linux, some type, that you can run on your Raspberry Pi. Raspbian is the most common. So starting with the SD card, I'm going with the SanDisk 16 gig. This is a number 10 A1, so it has some performance to it. The better the performance, the better that your Tiny Pilot is going to perform. You're going to have a lot less lag. So keep that in mind when you're looking for an SD card. 8 gig and up should work just fine. We are going to, again, use the Raspberry Pi config tool. We'll hit Choose OS. And you can select any one you want. Remember, the config tool is going to pull it down and put it on your SD card for you. 
Now you could just go with the generic one here, the one they use by default. It is Debian Bullseye, but it does have the desktop. So if that's something you need, go for that. I like to go into Other and use Raspberry Pi OS Lite. This is just the command line, no desktop, saves on some resources. So we're going to go with that one. And we'll choose Storage, our 16 gig card, and then let's go to Settings. Now in Settings, you can change things that you would normally change in the configuration files going into that boot directory like I've showed you a million times on Octoprint on that SD card. Here, you can just have it go ahead and configure the whole thing for you. You won't have to mess with it. So let's go ahead and have it change our host name. The default host is Raspberry Pi. Let's call ours KVM IP. That way, when I see it on the network, I'll know what it is. When you set this name, it is kind of important because this is the name that you will be using to access your KVM going forward. So be aware of that. We want to enable SSH because we want to be able to get into the Pi with PuTTY and change up some settings and do our install. We're going to use password authentication. We won't mess with keys today. And then set up your username. I usually just go with the default users that we use for Octoprint. So I'm going to do Pi, password, raspberry. And we want to also configure our Wi-Fi. So punch in your Wi-Fi information. Remember, this is all case sensitive. And set your Wi-Fi country. This can be important depending on where you are. I find the arrow keys much faster to get through the list. And we're going with US. We'll go ahead and set our local settings. Chicago is good enough for me. Central time zone, US keyboard. We're going to skip the first run wizard. And we're going to eject the media when we're done. So let's go ahead and save. And now we can write the card. And it will delete everything on that card. Just be prepared. But having those settings here in the Raspberry Pi tool is much handier. You don't have to go edit any text files. This will be ready to go on the network 100% as soon as we plug it into the Pi and power up. While our SD card is building, let's go ahead and take a look at the hardware we're going to use. I am going with a Raspberry Pi 4. You do need the Pi 4 because of this USB-C OTG connection. We'll talk about that just a little bit more in a second. But you need the Pi 4. It doesn't matter how much memory you get. This one is an 8 gig. You need an HDMI adapter. This goes the opposite direction. Basically, you're taking the computer HDMI output, putting it on this side, and you're converting it over to USB so that you can see the computer's output on the Raspberry Pi. So basically, you're just feeding video in to the USB connection. This is a USB 3. You need just a regular HDMI cable, and on these cables, you might want to get shorter ones just depending on the install where you put it because you could just put your Raspberry Pi on top of your computer and you don't want a lot of extra cable. You need one USB-A to micro cable and then one USB-A to C cable. You also need a power adapter for your Raspberry Pi. Now for this setup with the tiny pilot adapter I'm going to be using, I'll show you that in a second, we need a 3 amp with the micro plug on the end, not the USB-C. So be aware of that. And then we have our tiny pilot module, and this makes things a whole lot easier. Now I got this from tiny pilot. They're $35. What this adapter does is allow you to send power and data to that USB-C OTG port on your Raspberry Pi. On the Pi 4, you have this USB-C OTG port on the go. It can accept power and data on the same port, and that can be really useful. So with this module on this side, we've got micro ports. We can do data on this side, power on this side, and then from this side, send the whole thing to this OTG port. The power, obviously, to power up the Pi, the data to control your keyboard and mouse. This also keeps power from flowing back. You don't want any power flowing back into your PC. Things can get unpredictable. This keeps everything where it should be and consistent. Well worth the money and you're supporting the project. And this switch here is just to power the whole thing on and off. The other scenario that you would be in is you would have to power your Pi with one of your USB ports. 
If you're going to try that, at least use a USB 3, but that is not enough juice to power a Pi. I believe these are like 0.9 amps at best, and you really want your Pi 4 running at 2.5 or 3 amps to keep things consistent. Your Pi is going to complain, it's going to throttle down if you try to do this. It will give you power and the data you need to control it, but not something you want to do. Go with one of these modules. It's just way easier. And I'm going to reiterate again, without this Tiny Pilot power connector, I probably wouldn't have attempted this setup. It just doesn't work out all that well. With this connector, you get all the power to the Pi you need, you keep your computer safe, and for just 35 bucks, it's a great way to support the Tiny Pilot project. So if you're going to build one, definitely grab one of these. Of course, I am not paid by Tiny Pilot. I just think they're doing great work. So now let's stick this whole thing together and get it up and running. Our SD card build is done. We can go ahead and continue and pull that out of the computer. And we can just go ahead and mount that card on our Raspberry Pi. And here's how it works. It actually took me just a minute to get all the cables laid out and get my head around it. But once you get it set up, it makes a whole lot of sense. So you've got your power adapter. Again, this is a micro cable that goes into the power side of your module. Then you have your USB-A to micro goes in the other side. And this side can go in any port on your computer. And we'll just go with one of these USB 3s right here. That allows you to send the keyboard and mouse data over to the computer so you can control it. And then this side of the adapter, you use your A to USB-C, one side on this end, and the other side goes into the power port, the OTG port, on your Raspberry Pi 4. Now you have your data and the power you need. And remember what I said about the length of cables. You probably want to get some short ones. I'm just going to plan on printing out a case and setting it right there on top of my mini computer. In fact, just to make this video just a little bit more 3D printing, Benchy for scale. Now all we have left to do is get the HDMI output that would usually go to the monitor over to the Raspberry Pi. So that's where your regular HDMI cable is going to come in to your computer, then to your HDMI to USB, and then USB to a USB 3 port on the front of your Raspberry Pi 4. There it is. That's all you have to do. You can go ahead and power up. So I suggest you just power up your Pi for now. We're going to let Linux come up. Leave your PC off. We still have to install TinyPilot, we have one command to run, and we want to give everything time to install any drivers, anything that might be needed for that HDMI to USB converter. Okay, after Linux comes up, we can go ahead and use our host name that we set when we built the SD card to log in to install TinyPilot. We went with KVM IP, and we'll put a dot local. And we'll use our login settings that we used when we set up the SD card. I went with Pi and Raspberry back to the tiny pilot github we just need to copy this whole block we're going to use a curl command to pull down the software we need and install it and then do a reboot so we'll just copy this back to putty paste it right here and just hit enter this takes about 10 minutes or so it does do this git update that can take a few minutes so it takes a little while to install but we'll wait the install is actually somewhat interesting. It goes through, installs pip, it uses Ansible and playbooks to get a lot of this done. So that's kind of a cool way to do things. And when the install is done, it should go ahead and reboot. I have seen it, I've installed it a couple of times, that you didn't get the disconnect message. It was just sitting here waiting on this last line. If that's the case, just hit enter, then you'll get the error, and then you know that it has done the reboot. So that should be all there is to the install. We can go ahead and hit OK, but we can just bring up the browser. And you use that same host name, the one we used to get into PuTTY. HTTP colon forward slash forward slash KVMIP forward slash. Hit enter. The dot local should be implied. And here it is, tiny pilot. Now the PC is off, but that's what we want. There's a few settings you have here. In the Pro version, you have a lot more settings like virtual media, 
but you can update TinyPilot from here, change host name, video settings, logs, power, all of your actions if you need to paste. Wake on LAN is available in Pro, so that might be something that would be advantageous to others because that's the biggest thing about KVM versus something like an ILO on a server. The ILO will allow you to actually power it down if it were stuck in boot. But that's way more advanced than what we're doing here. But Wake on LAN might help. You can take screenshots, you have keyboard shortcuts, and then the view options, what kind of cursor if you want to go full screen, things like that. So now we're ready to go ahead and boot up the computer. So let's go ahead, hit the power button. We went into BIOS, now we're booting up into Windows, and we're at our login screen, and there it is. Our computer is up, ready to go. And you can see there is a little bit of lag on the mouse there, but not bad at all. It's totally functional for anything that you might want to do. We can open up Chrome. This computer is no speed demon, but for the things that we want to get done, it's more than usable. I'm super happy with this install. So some of you might be thinking, why don't we just use Remote Desktop or VNC to do the same thing? That'll allow us to control that computer and do whatever we want. Well, I need this KVM solution so I can show you the console. I want to be able to show you everything as I build an OS, and this is the only way to do it. And to make that more obvious, let's go ahead and shut down. We'll just restart. And you might have noticed the first time, but we actually see the BIOS screen. Right there, I can hit delete. We can go directly in the BIOS. We're not dependent on the OS. This is going to make it really handy when we do things like install Linux. You can see the console. I'll walk you through it step by step. And spoiler alert, we are going to do something like a dual boot on this PC so I can show you different installs for controlling 3D printers. So this is definitely the best solution. The only thing that would be better would be something like an ILO, like I said before, so you could actually control the power. But Wake on LAN might be helpful as well. So there we go, our tiny pilot KVM over IP setup is now complete. And this is gonna be a great base going forward. Now we have a mini computer, we can do a lot of these farm type installs that we've done in the past, running Octoprint on Windows or Linux. And I know there's probably more than one user using a PC for their farm to control their 3D printers. And having a device like this KVM over IP could be very useful if you need to troubleshoot something with it while 3D prints are going on. You could always use something like VNC or Remote Desktop, but this gives you a lot more flexibility. So hopefully there's a lot of users that might find this video helpful. That is it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one. At least I 3D printed the case for the Raspberry Pi.